All right, guys, we're at the uh, Ritchie Brothers auction in uh, Davenport, Florida in February 2022. We're gonna check out everything they got. If you guys not been to this auction it is one of the biggest auctions around there's i don't know thousands and thousands of pieces down here so we're gonna go down there and pick out a few pieces and uh check them out this auction will actually probably bid online on this one back home um i think they don't they may have an in-person auction i don't know but it's easy with the uh, richie brothers just to bid online so i think uh, dirt perfect and uh Let's dig 18 and dirt bosses down here too somewhere so we may run into them but uh we're gonna do some checking of some uh equipment got a little dresser td9 here it's looking like it's uh seen better days undercarriage is out no, of it but... see that's stretched out look at this sprocket back here there's no sense even running that sprocket the plumb gone look at that you uh keys no i didn't i don't need that that hey, uh pin is completely wore out there but you're wasting your time piece of junk i don't believe that he said i had 3700 hours we got a g series john deere here i'll check it out it's a lever steer looks like it's got the original blade skin still on it it's more leaking got this uh super custom cutaway to get to the injection pump somebody's too lazy to take some bolts out things looking a little rough ain't it yeah putting looking a yoke on it painted up d6 and a bunch of little rollers i think i may have seen a big old 1050k over here we'll see if we can find it hey watch my player on all right, we're down here in the bigger dozer land. Like we got a 850B. That's just what Mike runs at Dirt Perfect. I actually buy a lot of pipe layer dozers because they're lower hour machines. That one wasn't showing a whole lot of hours if they're right, but it doesn't have a blade on it. But I know a guy that's got a tractor that's getting uh, some hours on it might need uh, another tractor to swap the blade and stuff out. So don't look too terrible. It's got aftermarket rails on it, so it's where the blade cylinders would go up to. And these tractors get a lot of idle time on them, for sure. Got a big 1050k. You guys watch my channel. We actually had one of these. We've run a little bit and sold. Undercarriage is getting down on that one a little bit. We got the big pipe layer boom on this that folds out so you can lay pipe in a ditch. A couple more case and a cat right there. So big old kamatsu over here there's actually a pretty unique uh high speed dozer john deere calls them we'll go over and check it out all right so this is what john deere calls a high speed dozer it's all got rubber tracks on it pretty pretty cool looking thing they got like a 750 or 850 blade and c-frame on them looks pretty similar might be 700 size c-frame i'm not for sure it all looks looks familiar high speed with the rubber tracks you don't see a lot of them i don't know how they went over but definitely an interesting concept for sure so almost looks like 700 lgp stuff could be wrong but i'm sure that blade's borrowed off a of 750 or 700 interesting interesting piece for sure so got a couple track loaders and if i'm not mistaken 
If you guys watched any of my previous auction videos, this is auction stop number four down here. Pretty sure this is the same exact tractor. It was at the line auction at the very first stop. So you guys can go back in the video. I'll put a link in the description, but I guarantee that's the same machine. I can tell how dirty and crap it is. The undercarriage is stretched out on it, but somebody's bought it down there, shipped it down here, trying to sell it, make a buck on it. That happens a lot down here. I've seen stuff just migrate to each sale. Dad's pointing out sticker on the West Side tractor sticker. That's a local dealer from home, so or Chicago, Indiana area. Well, we're gonna mosey back on down this way and check out most of the other dozers are on the other side down there. Over look at this 750B. Looks like the battery's dead on it. Look, and they don't have a whole lot of time on it. It's got some on it. I was looking at the uh, track guides. Don't have much wear. Stuff's pretty, pretty clean. It is getting. These would be the blade lift hoses here. Some hoses need replaced. Fan belts are hanging off of it. Look at the bushing in there. The bushing's got some wear on it. it. Had a blade on it for a while before they. One dime. You guys can see, I don't know if you can see that groove in there. It's actually a grease groove. And you get over here, this one's wore plumb out of it. So it's had a blade on it for a little while in its life for sure. So still not a lot of time for old as it is, but something to keep an eye on. I needs a little roller. This is the place to come. Check out this big cat military loader here. It's got some weight. 966, what is that? I think it's got some weight reduction going on in the door down here. It's been near an ocean or salty air or something. 966 H. 966H. Got some oil leaks. Not much time on it, but been sitting. I'm sure to bring big bucks. Quite a bit of rust on it here and there. We're going to keep on heading down to the little dozers. All right, we're on the other side over here at the little dozers. A little 650G TC. So if you don't know what some of these letters mean on these older machines, that TC stands for torque converter. Um, they made these in two different versions, but you got to be buyer beware because this is not a torque converter tractor. So a direct drive tractor will actually have four pedals here. You got your two steering pedals, the accelerator. This is actually D clutch for the direct drive. So even though this has a torque converter sticker on it, it's not. So the torque converter is more like a uh, automatic transmission in the car. So if you got it in gear and push your brake, you're going to come to a stop. The direct drive machine will just keep on trucking while it's in gear. Even if you hit the brake, it'll just kill the motor. So always believe this side don't even say TC. Quite a bit of play in that ball down there. Not too bad. Look at the undercarriage. Testing out all the gears in it. Steering brake work. You got an hour meter up there? It's in the side on this one, probably. Yeah. So when he puts that in gear, this thing will not stop unless you put it back in. You can hit those brakes. That's a deep clutch lever for that direct drive. So if he hits those brakes, it's just going to pull the motor down and kill the transmission. But your direct drive will have those four pedals. The torque converter will only have the three. So you can't believe what you see on the side of the machine. I personally 
also like the direct drive better. You get full power out of the machine. Um, torque converter is a little bit smoother. You hear that motor pulling down, that's that direct drive. The brakes are working good. What gear is that in? Got it pushed all the way down. The brakes probably aren't adjusted up all the way. The brakes probably aren't all adjusted all the way up. The pedal, the pedal. So when you push those brakes, it should kill the machine. But the pedals are really low. They're not. That's good. They're not adjusted up high enough. The adjustments down here probably just slipping. So and if you got the brakes adjusted up and that transmission's doing that, I mean that transmission's slipping. But I can see the way those pedals are going down. It's uh, just uh, needs some adjustment. So we'll probably write this one down in the book. Well, I don't have a cat key. I got a cat lock on it. I didn't bring my keys with me like a ding -a ling I'm gonna have to find a cat key. You got your keys? No, I don't. We'll write this one down, see how many hours this um, series here had the hour meter in that side over there. The early ones and later ones, they put them on the dash for some reason in the middle of the road, and they put them in there. So this machine's a 800,000 serial number, puts it in the mid 90s or so. I'm gonna write this one down. These shady people I run into over here. You're gonna buy this thing, you're just gonna run up the price on it. Well, I was showing the people over here, it's got a sticker on the side of it that's wrong already. So, so it is? says it's a torque converter machine. Oh, mine's got a big black thing around it. Somebody, somebody lied to it. Huh? That's an escalator key. What's this right here? You think you an equipment dealer would have brought his own key set, right? Last time he. I saw you. Yeah, this 500. <laughs> you guys find anything good? Uh, there's some diamonds in the rough out here. Yeah, they're pretty thin this year. They're definitely lacking on the cat dozers. Normally they have. There's like 300 of them these days. There's not much here at all. Did you guys get broke into it yet? 5,054. Yep. 5,050. The hour meters over here. On this one, it is. Yep. Uh -huh. on the series three or whatever these are so. all right got that one uh, marked down some company's been trading in their d5s are getting ready to sell them orange somebody may know who that is certain companies paint those certain colors i know kansas paints their machines that color but that's a contractor i'd say so yeah We're gonna keep on. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of those orange machines. D6H. We've got some new undercarriage on it. Got a root rake for a blade. D8. We go DAL. Okay. Uh, D6C over here. I'm really light on dozers this year. There should be another couple hundred more dozers here. Yeah. That's an old one. And the rails are coming off of them. You guys see this down here? The undercarriage is so wore out. You see those rollers down there? That rail is supposed to be sitting over there. It's jumped off. Somebody's been twisting and turning on it. The undercarriage is definitely wore out on it. This side's jumped over on the other side. That rail is supposed to be on the inside of the roller. So definitely seen better days for sure. It looks good from a distance like everything else. We're going to mosey on down this way. All right, looking at 450K, if you guys know this near John Deere stuff, K-Series dozers and the G-Series skid steers, they all got these push button pads up here. There's no keys in them, so you can set those pads up where they have to take a uh, like a four or five digit, three digit code and punch it in, or you can make them where they have no code. It's a pain in the butt whenever they send these to auctions. They don't tell anybody the codes or don't write them down. You don't know how to start them. 
So you're guessing numbers, you're typing in one, two, three, four, you're typing in the last four, the serial number, trying to figure out a code or four zeros. Sometimes they write it on a machine somewhere, just a pain in the butt. If they would just, uh, I mean, take the code out before you send it to auction or do something, or at least write it down. But 2183 it says. Sometimes they'll write it down and people erase them thinking they're getting a better deal or something. But we'll uh, see if we can't figure out the code here on it. Did you try the one, two, three, four? Yes, I did. Try four zeros. Try what? Four zeros. Hit the enter button. How about we'll try the last four, the serial number? Okay. It's four one two four. Then the enter. I wonder if this uh, is did that do anything? No. Try this number. It's uh, how many digits is it showing for on the screen? Is it six? It's just enter pin. All right. Try this number three six. Four one two four. It's a whole serial number, it's probably too much. Nope. Nothing. Pain in the butt. I wouldn't worry about it. 2200 hours. And shut it back off. Well, if you want to sell something, they need to put the freaking numbers down or take the codes off. Anyway, we'll move on. Show you guys this little D3K here. Actually has what they call pyramid pads on it. You guys can see those. It's more for swamp, low ground pressure application. See they're hollow on the backside, but I think their theory is the mud don't pack in there. They're supposed to be self-cleaning in the mud. It helps them float a little bit better. So, something you don't see every day for sure. And you know that dozer's been in some swampy, nasty conditions if they set it up with those pads. So. Definitely interesting. A brand near 850 L here. I'm gonna have to get up and try that machine. That is a new current series of the uh, John Deere dozer line. Took place to the 850K. I'm gonna go up here and give this dude a whirl and see what they've changed on them. I've not been up to him too close. So. The blade and stuff looks similar. I noticed this uh, cylinder mount's different. Or well, they've got it mounted on the C frame. Definitely a little different there. This is a LGP machine. It's got the 36 inch pads. So this looks like the uh, same cab that was on the 1050K I had. So right there, you see that? That says the code 1111. Somebody's actually been nice enough to write the code down this thing so we got this push button pad i was talking about here they done away with the key switch so i'm personally a big fan of the key switch but i guess that's the way the world's coming to so there we go we got our gauges 3900 hours start this thing up a little warm in here we'll turn on the ac radio up there Changed her blade control. He's just have a handle up here. Shut this door all the way. This spot here, you see this big open window that's set up for a GPS monitor, grade control, or something like that. But I'm noticing the visibility is really cut down on this. They got all the missions uh, under the hood. These things have got really big, like especially compared to the 850J, but we've lost a lot of visibility, mind you, being on a 1050 size tractor. but. Got the uh, blade here and the roller switch, tilt, kind of different. It takes something getting used to. So they've changed this too. Before they just had a joystick, like you know, simple joystick, and you had your speed up or down here. So looks like you're trying to copy Caterpillar here a little bit. So we're going to bump the throttle up. We got the deaccelerator push down. This looks like Ford here. Probably got to turn the parking brake off first. That might help. Now these are all different to me. Fasten seat belt to release park brake. They got everything going on in here. So don't want you falling out of a dozer. Must be why this is laying out here. Safety first, right? 
All right, park brakes off. Turn the throttle back up. Clicker and forward there. Should start going, so this should be our speed. You see those numbers going up there? You see this yellow light flashing? He's near, probably pretty much from the K up. When that light's flashing, it won't let you go over 2.5. That means the transmission oil is still cold. Cold. So we get people calling up, say, "Hey, we've got a light flashing because the dope driving off the trail. We've got a light flashing. Won't go any faster than 2.5." Well, that's because the oil's not hot yet. So we're trying to protect the system. So get the light picked up here. Definitely a little bit different with the steering. I'm sure Dad wouldn't like it because he's used to our style. So trying to copy Caterpillar on their control here pretty much to the T. I don't know what was the matter with the lever going back and forth, but trying to make it easier on the operator. Well, yeah, a little disappointed in the visibility. I know it's probably hard for you guys to tell, but you know, I'm sitting here. That's basically my view. I've got a little bit more out here, but big wide hood has really cut down on the visibility. Let me turn the D cell down there. Maybe. Stupid buttons. I don't know why it's not D cell. Anyway. New technology, it's all different. I still think it's hard to beat a G Series dozer. I mean, it's a nice cab and everything. Like I say, it reminds me of a 1050K cab. I mean, it feels like you're on one, it's so big up in there. So, I'm gonna shut this dude down. It's uh, probably gonna. They usually got these set where they'll cool down and whatnot. And I don't think we're stuck in here. I don't know. Got that great big old hood up in there for all the mission stuff. Definitely interesting. We got that set up, beefed up, heavy duty. And that wear point. I don't know. I guess it's the way everything's going. Definitely interesting. Keep getting bigger. Dad's over playing on a 550K, so. There's an 850k. That was a generation before. I'll take you around. You can see the hood. That tractor even has emissions on it. But take you see how much taller that hood is. How much bigger that front is on that thing. There's a lot of visibility that's gone there. Kind of disappointing. You see the hood slope down on these more, and you can see out what you're doing. And Just a lot better, a lot better view. Fortunately, that's uh, the ruination of the emission stuff, so everybody's got to deal with it one way or another. Guys, over checking a little 550k out with the cab. Eight thousand hours. That's the fight, isn't it? Nobody's green that day. the charge pressure on it. Not throwing any codes or yellow lights or anything. Got some dents on the blades. Definitely going to need some work. It's probably going to uh, bring more money than what uh, I can put into it and make a little bit on because somebody's going to buy it. it needs pins and pinning bush and work and all that good stuff. Alright, so you guys may have heard me in other videos. I'm always checking charge pressure on these things. I don't know if I explained that. So these newer dozers, most all the cats and the smaller dozers are all hydrostatic. So um, which that means they've got an engine drive and a couple hydraulic pumps that drive each uh, drive motor for the track. So it's kind of like a lawnmower, an over, overgrown lawnmower. So, the charge pressure is usually around that 350 pound range if everything's good. Um, what the charge pumps do, there's actually 
five pumps on a machine like this. You've got um, the first pump's going to be for one side of the tractor. You have a little charge pump in between. You have another main pump for this side. Then you have a hydraulic pump for the blade. So the job of the charge pumps is is to supply the main pumps with um, oil. So if you see that pressure drop on the charge pumps, that means the big pumps are probably bypassing. That's going to be a high dollar fix back here. So and if you see any codes for the charge pump pressure that's you know had low charge pump pressure or something like that in the previous history that's definitely something to um look at real close walk away and that charge pressure will drop as those machines heat up if the pumps are weak in them so it's something you can't tell a lot of times after you run them for an hour or two but once they get down below in that 200 range 250 range they'll actually cut these machines out of idle and won't do nothing so and then you're into big dollars if you got to go through the pump so you can spend twenty thousand dollars in the back end of one of these real quick so we're going to keep on checking some more out i'm going to show you something on this 550. another thing to look for you can tell hours on a dozer before you even get up in them i don't know if you guys can see it's actually got another blade skin it's been welded on the outside of this one so that machine's you know i've got i think dad just climbed in it says it's got eight thousand hours if they've been not taken care of and beat up places like this you see something like that they've usually got seven thousand hours or more on them so but uh that one's kind of loose and wore out so we're going to move on to it so an 850j there and a c we'll definitely check out 650h looks like it's uh <laughs> done for it's been in the rusty salt you guys see that broken spring there so this track adjuster has a grease fitting in it. you pump grease in there and it actually tightens your track up there's actually a big shock or a spring back in here that takes that load if you hit something it gives way so you don't break this but this spring's broken getting ready to fall out and it's all rusted and track frame needs repair that's a lot of work and big dollars there so what'd you find huh what'd you find oh it's rusted through on the side of where it's, it's a little rusty on there it's got some time on there blade skin's original it's not been replaced That thing is rusty, ain't it? You guys see that hole in that floorboard? That's not a good sign. It's been working down here in the salt and sand. Don't know about that one. Some good undercarriage under it. Got some shims left back here nobody's took out. And that thing's rusty though. We'll see if she'll fire up and how many hours it's got on it. That thing's just too rusty. It's been in the salt. It's something I don't want to uh, uh, sell. It looks like this machine's been down here. Definitely got an oil leak going on up there. For sure. This machine's had a blade skin put on it, so it's got some hours on it. Bigger tractor, run a little higher hours. This is the 850J. Go up there and see. What got going on. Got a little bit of rust here. See how many hours is on it? Ten thousand hours. It's getting up here. Checking the codes. Short, short, and the fan drive circuit. We'll look at these stored codes here. got some yeah they've uh, so I don't know if you guys can see any of this just from experience that's not a big deal so they've been trying to calibrate the transmission of this machine so they've had something go wrong with it and nothing is calibrating on it the pumps aren't calibrating right the reason I uh, know that you can go in these and actually select the hours it's been done just recently in the last three or four hours so it means that thing's probably got some issues we'll start it up and see what it's going to do so if it didn't calibrate right they had some issues they may have clear you know they may have actually got it and didn't clear the codes out it's hard telling so we'll run it here and see got some Pretty good play in the blade there. I'm moving the lever. 
you guys can see there's nothing going on with the blade there for quite a while. There's some slop down there. can't tell it, but I can feel it as soon as I take off that dozer's wanting to do this. Yeah, it's trying to miss track back and forth. Definitely it's not right. It's fighting itself back and forth though. May have a speed sensor out of it. You can actually go in here and read the speeds on the drive motors. This is going to show the left hand drive motor. We'll put it in gear. We're reading the speed on it. We'll do the right side. We're reading the speed on both those. So. That tells me that it is. Uh, tells me that's definitely not a uh, hydraulic pump doing that so I'm going to set the blade back down or excuse me it tells me it's not a speed sensor throwing those wacky codes it's got some pump issues that may need calibrator maybe something that you can uh, adjust out of it or it could be something a little deeper I actually didn't check the charge pressure on that but I'd say it's got some underlying issues like everything else at the sale so it can either be a quick uh, couple hour fix or it may be expensive so who knows we're going to move on to the next one i do see it's got a new final drive on it and that may have been a they put that on there and may have tried to calibrate it and the machine wouldn't calibrate because some pumps are out of adjustment so there's always telltale signs you got to look at on stuff like that so being that's new that's telling me that uh, you have to calibrate the system whenever you break in the drive motors they put that on there, tried to calibrate stuff. It wouldn't calibrate, and that's why it's tracking funny. So it's always something wrong with something here. All right, stumbled, stumbled across, uh, across a 750J here. It does. Somebody has put new rails on it, sprockets. It does have a lower blade skin on it. These things do wear through blade skins down there. So put new pads on it. It's probably got eight, 9,000 hours on it, if I was guessing. Dad's going to tell real quick. 9600. 9600. I was off a little bit, so. Not terrible if it's been taken care of. checking the charge pressure on it right now. Not bad. That top front got a lot of play in it. Definitely fixable. Codes. 
water and fuel that's not a big deal cinder ECU, ECU program 629 that happened at 9200 that happened 50 hours ago I've never seen that code engine can empty huh charge pressure low that's something we don't want to see when that happen and that happened happened about 50 hours ago it's happened twice happened that long ago it may have just been a fluke or sick or something who knows what that's all about said it had low charge pressure there about 50 hours ago happened a couple times could have been a fluke or look like they've had a bunch of stuff unplugged there so i don't know if you guys caught that but it looked like it's reading low charge pressure the sensor's up here for it so it may it looked like they had a bunch of stuff unplugged there at the same time engine controller and stuff it may have been working on it and it threw that code so that's what we'll hope anyway overall it's a pretty decent machine it brings the yeah there's that one top joint it's the big one in there that's that, the ball on the back here nobody's greased this bottom and the ball's pretty good so definitely got a lot of potential we'll write this one down couple three labir tractors it's something you don't see these too often so back in the past john deere and labir were actually uh together on their bigger machine so the older uh 950 and 1050 dozers all the way up through the i guess they had j's so the 950 c's and j's were actually yeah they're actually uh labir made machines but when john deere went to the k series in the 950s and 1050s they're all built by John Deere. And Labir actually built John Deere track loaders up to a few years ago too on the hydrostatic ones, the uh, 655s and 755s. But anything in the K series is all John Deere anymore. So kind of stepped away from them around 2015. But like I say, the bigger, the bigger dozers, the 950s and 1050s and the uh, later model track loaders were all made by Labir. They just had uh, John Deere paint on them, so. in Austria. These are actually some belt rental machines. Dad's going to tie one out. Build into the foot pedal of the way he's running it. Controls the foot pedal. Totally different what we're uh, used to. Kind of interesting the way they got that roller mount sitting back here. <coughs> I'm sure he's not going to have anything good to say about it. He's not used to. Him. Definitely a little different design. Kind of funky how that roller's offset that much. That rail is really close to there. It's supposed to have some track sag in it, but probably not the best design ever, for sure. So definitely interesting. Got a little 450H over here. May have to check out. It's got a blade on it, skin. A couple 700Ks. This one's got a blade skin welded on it. The other one's down there ready for one. A little bit of rust and corrosion on it. Where that thing's been. hours on a whole bunch DF fluid on it been in somewhat of a corrosive environment how many yeah some filters been changed here around 6,000 hours check it out and see what 
all about. Somebody's been running the windshield wiper, damaged the glass. Interesting, we're gonna check this one out, that one out, and maybe we'll go find some more cool stuff. All right, we got all the dozers checked out. They're probably like down to two thirds of what they usually got in a dozer. So I'm gonna walk on up around the way. They got all the side-by-sides, all the excavators and stuff's up that way. We're gonna go check, check those out. Water wagon had a few patches. So Richie Brothers, I think they have a subcontractor in there, but that's all a paint shop. They run the equipment through there and fix it up and paint it make it look pretty for the auction i think richie owns the building but there's a subcontractor in it leases it from him and paints all this stuff up a lot of this stuff sitting in here still gotta go through the shop yet so definitely a big old place there's another truck coming in you guys see all this empty space in here this is usually jam-packed full of excavators they usually stack like two foot apart this place is down like way over half this is usually full of stuff that's how low these sales are. I know there's still a lot of stuff here, but I've been coming down here for 14 years, and this is by far the smallest sale. Got the big excavators down here. We're going to mosey through here and see if we see anything we like. Over here in the little minis, that little... What's the pin with the blade deal here? Now well, they got extendable tracks on them. That's what he's talking about here. They got blade extensions. These tracks actually slide out. They're oh, slid out already. They're out now. Yeah, you can slide them in and narrow this little dude up. I want to get in a tight hole. I don't know how narrow they go. 48 go inches in maybe? Door, I'd yeah, say. I'd say. Door. I'm set up to work inside a building or something. Got a bunch of new in-port little diggers. Yeah, it's kind of disappointing here. Real disappointing. disappointing everywhere. Over there's just a lot of attachments, blacktop stuff, pavers. Yeah, I've never seen it like this here before. Nice looking Itachi over there. All right, we got a little 690C John Deere wheeled excavator. Actually, the original version, version of this would have been all tracks. Military spec these up. I think it was the Air Force. Put rubber tires on them for some reason. Kind of an interesting concept. Looks like an old uh, 550 blade or something like that. 450, 550 C frame. Definitely not real heavy duty. No pilot controls. We used to have one of these a long time ago, but it was on the tracks track version you got the old 466 john deere motor in them but definitely kind of unique this and don't even have outriggers on it i thought these had outriggers they're missing they did there's no outriggers on them yeah somebody's been working on that got the old u.s air force sticker on it there they had them hooked up in the whole ramps and everything yeah yeah it's got a whole lot of time on it but uh definitely would get that thing stuck anywhere you went it'd have to be on hard dry ground so we're gonna walk on around here just not found anything too exciting it's uh pretty low we do have some big old cranes up here i need to find me a drag line bucket to put on one of them then we could have some fun big old crane there military Seven these tank things take some time to set up. We got all the counterweights come off the back, expandable undercarriage. The thing is big. So I've run about every piece of equipment in my life. One thing I've never run is a drag line. I don't know if this one's set up for it. So we're looking, it's got the drum up there and the missing the pulley down here, ain't it? Yep, missing the pulley, but if you jump through, there's other second drum. So it's actually the drag drum that would pull the drag line bucket in. About 50 or 60 foot of stick. Yeah. 
Might be a little expensive to get shipped home. Looks like 60 foot. It's got an old Detroit in it, 471 it looks like. Yeah. Definitely be a screamer. Yeah, it looks like it. Detroit Diesel. This one's probably air operated, ain't it? Works alright, got a nice window up there. I'm trying to figure out what this deal is. It's all up in here. I doubt it's gonna start. This door comes straight out. Pull it right up. You gotta be a man. No. It's hydraulic in. Trying to see what kind of controls. Well, there's no. I'm sure somebody knows what they are. I don't know what it is. No key. Huh? Air. What was that? I'm in here pushing pedals. Well, they don't give there me much room. Independent travel and stuff over on the corn husker lever on the side. It lowers the boom over here on the right side down below. Your corn husker. Oh, here? No, way down here. I'd say over the right. Oh, here? Yeah, that probably locks it into it. In the travel mode or the boom up there. Well, they mode. didn't give a guy much room in here, did they? No, they were tight. Tight and hot. And, and loud. Man, guys, sure loud. I can imagine. This box is not 24 inch, 28 inches wide. Hmm. Got a heater on your toes. Heater? No key. That looks like a good time. Up, up your brakes. One for your hoist. Yeah. That's your hoist. This is the drag cable. And that's just a little seat, and that's all there is in there. You got the seats kind of dark in here. Back when they had real men. Hydraulic valves on them. There's a hydraulic valve. Yeah. My dad used to have one of these when I was real little. Got the old chain drive sprockets. See the, see the friction brakes and clutches? Yeah. Band wrap around the internal brake. That's that. Brake up there? Yep. Interesting. Cost too much to ship home. Yeah, you can buy the bucket on like you do. That's all you need, isn't it? Maybe I should go buy that today. You're all out of my price range. There's probably a bucket here for it somewhere. Oh, I'm sure there is. Yep. A whole bunch of the big grove. RT 880s here, a bunch of them. Those are high dollar units, fairly late model. We're gonna walk on down here towards the truck. It's kind of disappointing here this year. There's the paint shop here. I sent a bunch of stuff down here before. Big military scrapers and had them painted and sold down here, but pretty big operation. But we're gonna look at some more stuff and get out of here. If you guys like seeing this kind of stuff in these videos, let me know down below. Um, we got a couple more auctions to go to. This is tomorrow. Um, we're going to go down to Yoder and Fries, but this will probably be one of the later videos you see. Um, we'll probably go back home and bid online on this stuff. I don't have much wrote down. There's not a lot here that we're interested in. It's uh, rough times right now buying stuff, so 
definitely leave me some comments if you like what you see give me a thumbs up it helps me out a lot and we'll see you guys next time